Hello, thank you for all joining us tonight. I am Paula Bray, the DX Lab Leader at the State Library of New South Wales. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we meet on country this evening. I live and work on Gadigal land and take this opportunity to pay my respects to elders past, present and especially emerging. I'd also like to extend that respect to any Aboriginal Australians who are joining us tonight. This is my workplace, it's the State Library of New South Wales. And I run the DX Lab. Um, the DX Lab is a innovation lab that looks at making um, the library's collection data more accessible and experienced in different ways through new and emerging technologies. Um, but tonight I'm gonna to be talking about one of our recent experiments, uh, the diary files. So a little bit about my, um, my lab. We're a small team. We, um, it's a first for cultural heritage innovation labs in Australia. Uh, we support user-led design thinking, experimentation and research in the digital humanities. And it's really great to see some other cultural heritage institutions setting up labs and exploring a more exper experimental way of working currently. So these are our design principles and these were um, uh, brought together by staff very early on in setting up the DX lab and I, I want to sort of pay attention to this constant prototyping, um, uh, you know, publishing early, getting feedback and then improving on um, what we've already published due to this feedback. We're seeing the benefits of working in this way in the library and this is influencing other sections and other teams where we get um, audience feedback early on and then improve on what we do. These are our values and I think surprise is um, one of the more delightful ones that the staff really wanted us to explore was creating uh, innovation but, but also looking at surprising our audiences in new ways. This is our website. You'll find um, uh, we have a very busy publishing schedule and um, we like to share as much information about what we learn. Um, and you'll notice that on the blogs part of our website. Um, we also have published all of our experiments on a, this particular page. Here's just a sample of um, quite a few that we have done recently. And we um, also run a, a fellowship program, uh, which includes a smaller sort of grant digital drop-in program, which is a nice way of bringing in um, creative technologists to work with us and our collection. So back in March, we were working on this prototype. It is um, taking the library's sheet music collection and turning it into um, playable, uh, music in the browser. So we're getting pretty excited about this one um, and then COVID happened and it kind of threw all of us worldwide into um, a new way of working. So everything shifted for us at the library. Uh, we obviously had to close our doors but we, we don't close the um, collecting that we, th that we do. So we document the heritage uh, of the people and communities in New South Wales in our collection. We pro provide access to this material that enriches people's lives now and into the future. So this moment of, of collecting has been really significant and Im an important time for us when we think about what do we collect. So one of the issues we had with the pandemic in 1919 was a lack of material that really related to the emotional side of how people were impacted by that pandemic. So we were thinking, well, what should we be doing? We've um, developed a um, Instagram photo collecting project with using the hashtag New South Wales at Home. And this helps us tell the story to future generations. We also have a social media archiving tool uh, and we collect a lot of born digital content 
there's the traditional physical ephemera and original materials that also make their way into our collection. But looking at what we lacked from the 1919 pandemic, we were wondering what else could we do? What other kind of form of collecting um, or support for our community can, can we do and can we do quite quickly? So we're looking at addressing some of those gaps in the collecting that we have, um, but also looking at the, the community con connectivity during such a historic moment. Can we build a platform where people can share stories or a moment in time, add poetry, song lyrics, anything that they would like to tell us in um, a short kind of snippet of text? So we looked at a previous uh, website that we had built called New South Wales um, and looked at the back end infrastructure of this massive photo sharing uh, experience which was all crowd curated. And we felt that we could use the back end infrastructure of this particular experience, replicate it um, and create another instance in WordPress and then design a new front end experience so that we could quickly um, get together a website where we could have pre-moderated um, written posts that could be published via a web form. So we're really interested in text only. We're interested in um, getting something built that was very simple in its design, had to be done in a couple of weeks because we were losing momentum with um, the potential lockdown being eased and people returning to what we thought was a bit more of a normal uh, daily routine. Um, and we also decided that we wanted short snippets of text. So we wanted to, it to be less than 300 words in length. So on the 4th of May this year, um, we launched um, the diary files. And within a day we had um, managed to get a partnership with um, ABC Radio Sydney. And they were doing a project called This Moment in Time. And they would read out our diary entries every morning on the radio. And this really pushed uh, participation. So people would hear these stories and then we'd get a rush of diary entries on the site. Really encouraged participation. Uh, the design was simple, but we did add a um, animation to the homepage. It was based on this typewriter, the Remington from our collection. Uh, here it is seen as an animation in the browser with the call to action and the start writing button. It's a very simple process for people, um, but we felt that we needed to get some friends and media identities to help us launch this in the beginning so that we could gain some reach within our audiences. So these are the people we reached out to. Um, here is an example of the text. Um, the left one is written by Tony Birch, the author in Victoria. And on the right is a lovely story by comedian and design enthusiast, Tim Ross, who wrote about his mother's old orange casserole dish. Um, and this is an example of the social media that we pushed out so that we could reach audiences and inspire them to, to write their own stories. This is actually a story on the ABC website called um, reflections on life in coronavirus isolation. So they promoted a photo essay um, experience alongside our diary entries, really trying to capture a, um, a time capsule of life in lockdown. And we were noticing, you know, that isolation, loneliness really figure quite prominently in both their images their photo essays and our diary entries. So here's just some examples. Um, people writing about their relatives in the New March House outbreak. Um, nurses talking about having to work, not necessarily as essential services, but you know, continue, continuing to work in hospitals and that babies don't stop being born outside of a pandemic. 
we have lovely um, stories from students. You know, here's one where a student says that she can do her study with her chicken on her lap. <laughs> and a lot of people reaching out, talking about how fragile life is. So these are really, you know, important pieces of uh, writing that our future historians and researchers can turn to in 5, 10, 15, you know, 20 years or so to really look at what was happening from the perspective of the community. So if we take a look a little bit further of um, some of the age ranges that we're getting, Charles here claims to be four and a half. Um, I think he may have had a little bit of help with this one, but gorgeous little entry about make sure you wash your hands so that you don't get sick. We have um, Anne who um, wrote a, a poem with another Anne. She's 102, the other Anne is 80. Uh, we're really encouraging people to do multiple um, entries via uh, connecting their stories through their email. So when they submit, um, if they put their email in, which we don't publish, then their posts will appear all together. This is a lovely story by a woman called Wendy Blacksland who um, contributed 27 entries for us, all poetry. Um, and I had a few emails with her trying to sort out some of her um, formatting issues. And um, she was so keen to have her poetry read out on the radio, but she ended up being published in the Sydney Morning Herald in this particular story, which is um, Bad Times Made Better by Verse. Uh, and once we had that story published, um, uh, we got a lot more poetry coming through on the diary files. Here is an example of um, someone creating um, a, a piece called The Ruby Princess, but it was meant to be read out to the tune of um, the Rolling Stones' Ruby Tuesday, or sung. <laughs> um, so lovely creative pieces coming through. Um, children writing from the perspective of their um, little three-year-old poodle. This is Hugo, he's 10. Um, Peter Mariani um, wrote a few uh, entries as log notes in the form of Star Trek ship captains logs, which is gorgeous. So after a couple of weeks, we realized that we were getting a lot of entries and we needed uh, people to be able to kind of find these a lot better. So we added search, but we also decided that we needed to have a look at the data that was coming through. So we built a dashboard and this dashboard here is looking at the ages uh, and you'll see a significant jump of um, 10 to 15 year olds. Now this was due to school going back and uh, a push by our learning services team to promote writing for children in this age group. Uh, which was fantastic. So we've got a lot of um, students who have been sharing their uh, emotive feelings with us and um, really testing their skills uh, in writing, which has been lovely. Here's an example from a 14 year old Montana Markland. Um, she wrote quite a few. Um, we also decided that we should possibly tag a few with um, looking at some key words that are being used in each of the entries. So we've got some search suggestions that every time you go to the search box, they change. Um, so this is a nice way of actually just looking at a lot of, um, a lot of the entries as um, in, in, tag, in tag suggestions, because there's almost a thousand in there now and it's, it, it can be a little hard to, to drill down. We also uh, provided um, sort of like a tag in cloud so you can see the types of the most popular uh, words that are being used in the entries. Um, so you can see school there mentioned um, 657 times, um, home, family, life, work, virus, those sorts of things coming through. 
We also broke down um, location. Not everyone had to put in their location. It was optional, but it, gave, it gives us an indication of what areas we can target uh, further to potentially get more content. And we've done this by looking at um, where our entries are coming from. They're very city focused. Uh, and so we've done a push um, into more regional areas to get some more content coming in from uh, around New South Wales. We've done this through the Public Library Network and through some boosted um, social media posts. So this really gives us an insight into the data coming through. So that's it from me. Thank you. Um, we're almost at a thousand, so um, it's really great that our community has been so prolific in sharing their thoughts with us and helping the future researchers understand what it's like to live life during COVID-19 in 2020. So thank you.